Afghanistan's grid is collapsing. 80% of its electricity still comes from neighboring countries. But now, the Taliban just revealed a mega project no one saw coming. Multiple 40 megawatt solar plants racing to outrun blackouts from Balkh to Logar. When the January 2024 blackout hit, hospitals ran on diesel and the capital plunged into darkness. The plan? Pour tens of millions into homegrown sun power. Faster than the grid can fail, betting everything on a risky solar surge before another winter crisis. But will these bold moves finally break Afghanistan's blackout cycle, or are new risks hiding just over the horizon? 80% of Afghanistan's electricity still arrives by wire from across the border. That dependence isn't just a statistic, it's a live wire running through every city and village, exposed to the weather and the will of foreign suppliers. When Uzbekistan cut the power in January 2024, Kabul and half a dozen other cities went dark almost instantly. Hospitals scrambled to keep ventilators running on diesel. Vaccine fridges, traffic lights, water pumps, anything that needed a steady current was at risk. In some neighborhoods, families burned wood indoors to fight the cold as the grid flickered on and off for days. The blackout wasn't just an inconvenience, it triggered an emergency session of the Taliban's cabinet with ministers racing to find backup fuel and plead for restored supply. The message was clear. Afghanistan's energy security was only as strong as its weakest foreign link. Each winter brings the same threat. A cold snap in Central Asia, a dispute over payments, a technical glitch hundreds of miles away, any one of these can plunge millions into darkness overnight. And every outage drains Afghanistan's hard currency reserves, with over $200 million a year spent just to keep the lights on from abroad. The urgency isn't theoretical, it's lived every time the grid fails. That's why the rush to build domestic generation isn't just about development. It's a race against the next blackout, against a crisis that could hit at any moment, in any season. The country's leaders know the risks. As long as 80% of the power is imported, Afghanistan remains on the edge, one cable cut or border dispute away from another national emergency. On the outskirts of Mazar-e-Sharif, the first shipments of steel and silicon have arrived. This is Dehdadi, Balkh province, ground zero for Afghanistan's new solar push. The plan, a 40-megawatt photovoltaic plant, built for $28 million, with groundwork breaking in May 2025. For a country used to waiting years for new power lines, the timeline is ambitious. But that's the point. Solar can be rolled out fast in modular blocks, with each array stitched together by local engineers and a handful of outside contractors. The real engine behind the build is DBS, D Afghanistan Breshna Sherkat, the national utility. Its engineers, led by Safiola Ahmadzai, are betting that speed and scale can finally tip the balance away from import dependence. Ahmadzai, once a grid integration specialist, now manages the renewables division. He's kept his team together through regime change and donor pullouts, recruiting technical staff from across the provinces and negotiating contracts that, for the first time in years, put Afghan hands at the controls. 400 kilometers southeast, another 40 megawatt project is taking shape in Logar's Mohammed Aga district. Here, the numbers get even bigger. $28 million for the solar plant, plus $7.6 million for a brand new 126 megavolt ampere substation. This isn't just about generating electrons. The substation acts as a nerve center, routing power directly to industrial parks, smoothing out the peaks and valleys of solar output, and feeding the grid through high voltage lines. For the engineers on site, the stakes are clear. Every day without progress is another day the country burns cash on imports. The modular design means that as soon as one block is finished, it can start feeding power to the grid. No need to wait for the whole project to be complete. Each 40 megawatt site, once switched on, can power up to 45,000 Afghan households, but the first priority is industry. Factories and workshops get their own feeders, aimed at keeping production lines running even during peak demand. It's not just about construction, it's about control. For the first time, Afghanistan's engineers have a shot at building a power system that answers to them. Not to foreign suppliers, not to the weather in Tashkent or Tehran. The Balkh and Logar flagships are more than just solar farms. 
They're the opening moves in a campaign to make blackouts a thing of the past. In Nangarha, the latest plans call for a 40.25 megawatt solar field tied directly to the province's industrial parks. It's not just about lighting homes, factories and workshops will draw power first, keeping production lines running during the day when solar output peaks. Meanwhile, in Lagman, a 10 megawatt site has already started feeding the local grid. Provincial officials say the goal is 24-hour supply, a promise that's rarely been kept in the past. Even smaller projects are making a difference. In Herat, a 5-megawatt solar plant now supports both city demand and a growing cluster of factories. But the real story in Herat is the panel factory itself. Every day, around 300 solar panels come off the line, built by local workers earning above average wages for the region. Their routines are basic – soldering, testing, cleaning – but the sense of purpose is new. For many, this is more than a job. It's a chance to build something that could finally end the cycle of blackouts. The rollout is spreading across provinces, one site at a time, each adding a new piece to Afghanistan's push for energy independence. Dust storms sweep across the solar fields in Balkh, Logar, and Herat, coating panels in a fine layer that can cut electricity output by up to 25% if left uncleaned. That's not a minor dip. It's the difference between powering 40,000 homes and leaving thousands in the dark. Engineers at ABS track these losses in real time, but the solution isn't as simple as rinsing off the panels. Water for cleaning competes with farmers and towns, especially in the dry season. Some sites have struck deals with local mosques to use cisterns, but even then, the risk of tension with nearby villages is never far away. The supply chain adds another headache. Inverters and trackers still come from abroad, and a single customs delay can put a megawatt-scale site on hold for weeks. Herat's panel factory helps, but raw materials are still imported, and spare parts for major equipment can take months to arrive. Then there's the grid itself. Afghanistan's 220 kV backbone is already running close to its limit. Add too much solar too fast, and the whole system risks overload, especially during peak sun. Substations like Logar's new 126 MVA node are supposed to relieve some of that pressure, but grid engineers warn that without more upgrades, bottlenecks could trigger forced curtailments. And while new projects promise jobs, the pipeline of skilled technicians is thin. Just 10 to 20 trained solar specialists graduate each year. O and M teams are stretched, and international contractors still handle most of the high-stakes fixes. For Afghanistan's solar gamble to pay off, Every link in the chain, from cleaning crews to grid operators, has to hold. Every new megawatt of solar built inside Afghanistan does more than power homes. It keeps about $100,000 a year in the country, money that would otherwise flow straight to foreign power suppliers. A single 40-megawatt plant, like those rising in Balkh and Logar, can offset up to $4 million in hard currency outflows every year. That's a lifeline for a cash-strapped economy especially when winter blackouts send import prices soaring. Meanwhile, the region is surging ahead. Uzbekistan and Iran are adding gigawatts of solar, racing to lock in energy independence and shield their grids from price shocks. Afghanistan's pipeline is smaller, but every site is aimed at the country's most exposed corridors, industrial parks, border towns, and cities that have spent years in the dark. The future now splits in two, deliver on these projects, and Afghanistan could finally cut the cord to its neighbors. Fall short, and the cycle of outages and import bills will keep repeating. The outcome hangs on what happens next. In 2025, the launch of 40 megawatt solar plants in Balkh, Logar, and Nangarhar marks the country's largest push yet to build up domestic power. Each site is designed to supply up to 45,000 households and reduce hard currency outflows. What's clear is that every new megawatt of solar makes Afghanistan less vulnerable to sudden import cuts and rising costs. The outcome of these projects, whether they deliver reliable power or become stranded assets, now depends on execution, not intention. For Afghanistan, 40 megawatt blocks aren't just numbers. They're a test of whether the lights can stay on this winter and beyond.